Kia ora and welcome to Rob Kelly with our book review this morning. Kia ora, Catherine. Uh, you have been reading The Women of Rothschild by Natalie Livingston. I have, and Natalie deserves some kind of award purely for the family tree at the beginning of this book. So the, it's a rewriting of the history of the Rothschild dynasty, focusing on the women of it, who have been, not somewhat, they've been pretty much totally left out of the history of the Rothschild family. And there's a reason for that within the historical record as much as anything else. Uh, the founding father of the bank, Maya Amschel Rothschild, uh, left in his will an instruction that no daughter, nor son-in-law, nor heir would have a share in the business of the bank. I would never be able to forgive any of my children if, contrary to these my paternal wishes, it should be allowed to happen that my sons were upset in the peaceful possession and prosecution of their business interests. So right from the beginning of the Rothschild family dynasty, the women were quite literally written out. And what Natalie is trying to do, and I think successfully doing, is writing the women back in. They were a really big believers in cousin marriage. So uh, the family tree at the beginning of this book that I'm just looking at now, which is covered, Catherine, in butterflies, um, because Walter Rothschild uh, was not the only member of the Rothschild family who was very into insects. <laughs> so I really enjoyed hearing that <laughs> from Oliver. Um, the family tree is very confusing because they all married each other. So, <laughs> so you have to kind of work your way through. Um, it's a very interesting book. It's absolutely huge. And it's extremely well researched and footnoted, which I very much appreciate. I'm very much a footnote guy. But I think if you don't know very much about the Rothschild family or um, the kind of Jewish history of business or banking in the 20th century, this might be a tiny bit of a tough read. Uh, I had to look up quite a lot of stuff as I went, which I don't mind doing. But I think uh, this is an addition to the scholarship as opposed to maybe something that you might dive in with first. And is that because it has the feel, a, a rather academic feel, yeah? Yes, I would say so. I think the writing is actually quite accessible. I found it very readable. Uh, but it, it, what it's doing is a historiographical argument. So the, the whole point of the book is to try and rewrite this history. That's something I'm a huge fan of. But in order to take that on, I think you do need to have a bit of knowledge of the other parts of it. I am now going to go and look at the other parts of it and am interested to do so. But it, it is a very dense book which follows these women. And she focuses really heavily on individual women, which I think is very smart. So those chapters are really, really interesting. I was particularly taken by Gutel Schnapper, who was the, um, the kind of first matriarch. Uh, who had so many children. That's another thing. I hadn't realised that if you want to build a dynasty, whether it be in banking or anything else, all of these, a lot of these women had a lot of children, which means that they just had a lot of resource, a lot of human resource, before that was a term, that you could throw at a business. Uh, but Gutel Schnapper um, grew up in Frankfurt, as did my Amschel Rothschild. Rothschild comes from Rothschild, um, which is the house of the Red Shield, uh, within the Jewish quarter in Frankfurt, all the houses had names. Uh, their name wasn't actually Rothschild. Uh, they took it on as a nickname, and then it eventually stuck. So that kind of stuff I found like um, extremely interesting. Like The role of women in 1780s Frankfurt was fascinating to me, and I had no idea. And also like thinking about the way in which, in the last few weeks... Um, kind of Jewish Eastern European history is being used. I mean, those same tropes that we've been seeing in the news in the last few weeks were in play in early 19th century Frankfurt because of the Napoleonic Wars. So there, there is a huge amount in this book, and I would highly recommend it to people who are interested in this period. But I do just wonder if it's a bit of a hard one to go into if you don't know a huge amount about it. The other thing is, as well, is that um, it's very biographical. It's very focused on the biographies of these women. So you could read it biography by biography. And that's sometimes how I like to read books like this. You could you could dip in and read about um, the interactions of the like 20th century jazz age 
with the woman of this family. Or you could dip in and look at um, the Queen of Fleas and the interaction between the study of fleas in this family and the women in it. Um, and the dressing of them in bridal garb, indeed. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, so... I. I think the, I the think, men, not the women. <laughs> well, yeah, I think the women were involved as well. Um, I think what Natalie is doing is, is an amazing historiographical uh, exercise, and I think it's been presented in a really beautiful and clever way, Brilliant. and I think it adds to the scholarship. Thank you. Rob Kelly has reviewed The Women of Rothschild by Natalie Livingston, published by Hachette New Zealand and $38 the price.